Do you remember last Sunday, Sunday evening, uh, afternoon? It was very rainy. It was cloudy. It was at Hockenheim Ring in Germany. It was a crazy Formula, Formula One race. You know what? With that Formula One cars. 200,000 people. Crazy. Uh, pit stops, accidents, crazy people around. And one person won, a Dutch guy, Max Verstappen. And do you know what he did when he crossed the line and the flag was running? He said, yes, we did it. We did it. Thank you, guys. Thank you for giving me the fastest pit stops in history. Thank you, guys, for choosing the tires. Thank you, Honda for giving me the best engine. Yes, we are one team, he said. See it back. Yes, we are one team. So teamwork makes a dream work. But only if we dare to change. If we don't dare to change, if we do not change, we have had our last chance. Yes. It's just to show you that this picture was taken two years ago, and now I'm like this. So it, I didn't change at all. You see? <laughs> yes. <laughs> For me, the last sentence is the best, because I like things to be told straight, straight away. And so my story, my, what I want to tell you is not always positive. Not always positive for Dutch Cannon Club, but also not always positive for breeders. Breeders in, in, in the Netherlands, but also <coughs> worldwide. And also not always positive for our organization, FCI, worldwide. Because I think the time to react has passed a long time ago. It's time to act. And if we don't act, but still are in the situation of reaction, we will lose our battle. We are losing our battle in dog world wide. And I mean dog world, not only FCI dog world, but in whole dog world. The Dutch Kennel Club was founded in 1902, and we are one of the five founders of the FCI. We are an organization of breed clubs and regional clubs. And we have about 500 clubs uh, representing about 160,000 people, individuals. And we have one board of seven people. We are chosen, the board is chosen by all these 500 clubs. And as you see on the beautiful picture on the right, here we have nine national breeds, and one breed is divided in three varieties. My first dog, I became it in 1976. I want to take you back for a few minutes, but to show you that we have not changed at all in 30, 40 years, at least not too much. And when I had my first dog, it was a non-purebred one. Look, that's, I called him Fido. And we, when we had the dog, it's only thank you, thank you to the breeder. Thank you that you give me my dog. No comments, nothing at all. Problems at home with my dog? Yes. Pity, said the breeder. I gave you that dog. I had no problems at all. Where? Where did it come from? No, not for me. Guarantee? No. Why? You paid me a little bit of that dog, and sorry, but things happen. Shit happens. Try another one. 
your breeder could not do bad. Everything you said, my breeder, he has the best dogs, he is the best in everything. We didn't know anything because we had no internet, we had no social media. We maybe saw the puppies of that letter once, and the people of that letter once, and further, there was nothing. So the world changed. It changed in responsibility. Everybody said, yeah, but who said he's not responsible? Who wanted to have that dog? And what did he do with the breeding? Social media came up. And that was one of the, not best, but the worst things we, it could happen to us, social media. They more break than build. And they destroy, social media can destroy people, can destroy dogs. It even kills people. But now, if I have a problem with a dog, in two minutes, maybe not even two minutes, it's on social media. And if I put something on social media, I put something last weekend that I did something with my dog in water trials and it was seen in five minutes by 100 people. And I tell you, if I told that my breeder was responsible for that very bad Newfoundland, it has been seen in five minutes, not for 100 people, but for 10,000 people. People want to have this and they want to spread it. And we have to take care of that because the world changed. Contracts lead to numerous court uh, uh, cases. Only in the Netherlands we have about five to 10 court cases every year. Animal welfare with very old ladies and old people who have a lot of money they give all the money to the animal welfare and they put all these court cases for other people. We have to deal with it. World changed. We didn't have that before. Puppy buyers, puppy buyers are much more aware of all problems and want to have more guarantees. When you now sell a puppy, the, owner, the, the new puppy owner comes and says, is he? Uh, can he be outside and not inside? Uh, will he be uh, healthy or not? Uh, will he become a champion or not? Will he be nice? And you all have to have guarantees for that. The world changed. And we, did we change? I show you an example in the dog world. And I'll talk about the Netherlands because when you tell about examples, you always should take yourself as the example. Then nobody can tell it's a rumor or it's this. It's just an example, but also a fact, in my opinion. Just look in the mirror. I, when I want to move on in my life, I have to see, I have to shave. You don't have to shave. so. But he always also looks in the mirror every day. I know that. But when you look, you don't see yourself in, in the mirror every day and you are not satisfied with the face you see inside or outside, then forget it. Stop this hobby. Stop to go with Dog World. Where were you in 1988. That's 31 years ago, ladies and gentlemen. And 31 years ago, the Dutch government presented, published a book, a report. And they call it Nice, Nicer, Nicest. And they talked about about 50 breeds, characteristics in health and exaggeration 31 years ago. And they told in the 
preface, but also in a lot of pages, be aware of exaggerations in dogs. The preface of the book, it said, the government is, I now have to see, oh, because my glasses are there and, <laughs> yes. The government is worried that breed characteristics in uh, standards, I cannot see it. We'll yeah. <laughs> will lead to exaggerations and disturbances in health of dogs. 31 years ago, let's make things clear, not all problems are the result of breed standards, but uh, unintentionally or careless breeding and inbreeding also lead to health problems. 31 years ago. Read specific instructions in that book. It's not the Scandinavians who did it. It's not the Dutch Kennel Club who did it. No, it's the Dutch government. 31 years ago, they had 50, about 50 breeds talking about breed specific instructions. Suggestions for the FCI in that preface to change standards to change terms like very short words like it can easily lead because very short can easily lead to exaggeration. Look, 1988, look these eyes. We, the Dutch government, told something about the eyes. The Dutch government told something about the short muzzle and the shape of the skull. The government told something about the eye problems of the bulldog and the short muzzle of the bulldog and the rings around his eyes. They also told about the ingrowing tail of the English bulldog 31 years ago. They also told, talked about the nose. You see, in 2019, we still talk about the nose, and this is, I think, from Cambridge uh, University uh, test that noses open, mid, moderate, or severe. 31 years ago. And how did we act? No, we did not act. We lost 30 years because we ignored the critics and we always said, okay, okay, it will pass, it will go away. We are doing, we are the people who know things about the breeds. We know how dog world has to be. So somebody told, yeah, we have to be, we tell all the world, be good and tell it. Yes, we are not that good. Because 30 years ago, some people told us what the problems were. So closing our eyes. And we are not responsible, are we? That's the problem we have to deal with. We, Dog World, FCI, uh, Dog World, Dutch Kennel Club, Dog World. Not all dogs are healthy. Don't believe if we say all FCI dogs are healthy. No, they are not all healthy. Not, oh, not all breeders, judges and clubs see and acknowledge problems. We do not see it. I can give you our own example of a breed that has falling disease. Big problem in the television in Dutch, in uh, the Netherlands. Falling disease and always the same. It's not the Cavalier, it's another one, but always the same uh, dogs going on television. I know that in America and in Europe, there are two different, not one, two different tests running. 
They try to find the DNA, they try to find out, but a lot of breed clubs in Europe don't even act because they say, we don't have the problem in the breed. Yes, if you do this, you don't see that there's a problem in the breed. And I can guarantee if we don't see it, other people will see it. Our judges, oh, uh, not always enough knowledge about diseases in our breeds. And I'm very glad that Thomas, he presented a test about 100,000 100, uh, dogs. I didn't know it. Who else didn't know that test, this test was there? A lot of people didn't know. So we all try to find out our own things. And maybe there are a lot of things. International Partnership of Dogs has, as an international organization, a lot of results uh, working together with universities. But do we know this? A lot of people don't know. A lot of breeders don't know, and a lot of kennel clubs don't know. This is a real problem. We live in our own world, and we should be more together, more like a team. Although we are one worldwide organization, we work and act almost alone. No knowledge about the others. And I know that's not quite true. But a lot of us still do. I also still work alone a lot. And then I come and ask somebody, and then he said, but <laughs> we already had a lot of things for that. And then then think with myself how stupid I am. If I had asked before, if we had worked together before, then I would have worked much, much more. They, the other ones, illegal puppy trade, a lot, a lot. I will show you the uh, facts in the Netherlands. Pedigree dogs are in the minority. I will show you. Enforcement regulation is very difficult. If you have regulations, try to get other ones. It's almost impossible. No knowledge about breeds and the origin of breeds. They, the government, the animal welfare, they don't know, almost, they don't almost know nothing about breeds. If a dog has rings or a lot of skin, they don't know what's the origin because a dog has to be functional. And if a mastino has some skin, yes, it has to be, it has to have some skin. Not too much, but it has to have. It was for his work. No knowledge about the health of purebred versus non-purebred. A lot of people before today told this. There is no knowledge by the other party about the purebred and the non-purebred. But we judges, we think all our dogs are perfect, nearly perfect. I did some tests, I checked some dog shows in 2018. Two, four, six, eight, nine. In different parts of Europe, all others, also one in the Netherlands. You see, oh, excellent. 80, more than 80% of dogs became excellent. Are they all excellent dogs? Fit for function? Fitting to the standard? Without problems? Well behaved? Good movers? Without breeding problems? I doubt, more than 80%. And only very little got goods and moderates. It's also seeing in the mirror. When I judge, I want to see myself in the mirror on Monday morning. I go to this because we already saw that. But the puppy facts in the Netherlands, the puppy facts in the Netherlands, 
and I told you there's a very mi minor amount of uh, purebred. It's 40,000, around 40,000, and decreasing because of a lot of regulations we have. And I agree with the French Bulldog, when the French Bulldog, when the, you have a lot of regulations, people go. And I ask myself, is, is it worse that you have too strict regulations because, look, you have illegal trade coming from a lot of, we call it, the old East European countries. I can, I can give you facts. It's not a thing I want to say, but I can give you facts of that. And although we give social media with this, people buy 80,000 puppies, illegal trade. People buy import stray. People buy non-purebred commercial breeds. Looking like a Labrador doesn't have the pedigree as a bad, um, Labrador. So this is really a problem. If we keep on fighting and making a lot of regulations, regulations, this will go back and this will go. It's my personal opinion and I think it's, it's reasonable. What's our problem? Because when we want to change, we have to see who is responsible for everything. And Sean also told a lot of this. But I made some people and organizations who I think are responsible for the things we have now. And this is these are a lot, a lot of stakeholders, a lot of organizations. And don't tell me that the breeder is um, uh, responsible for everything. It's very fast said word, but it's not true, not completely true. Of course, the breeder picks out the male, the breeder picks out the female, and the breeder educates the first eight to 15 weeks. But there are also other people responsible. Media is responsible. The vets are responsible. As long as we have vets who do the artificial, artificial insemination with English Bulldog and make an appointment for nine weeks later, the cesarean operation, then they are responsible too. I think. And as long as we have judges who put up a Pekingese in the main ring, in my show, so it's my example, on a cooling, cooling system or something on the hand, taking, taking the Pekingese on the hand, yes, putting him, he was best of breed, putting him in the main ring, on the ground, the judge said, up and down, five meters up, five meters down, put him in up again, and made him best in group. As long as we do that, we are responsible too. So a lot of organizations are responsible, and everybody looks at everybody. And this is the critical situation. Because when everybody looks at everybody, nothing will change, nothing will happen. Then we started to act. We tried to start to act. And, but we did not act properly, I think. We kept too much our dogs, our standards, our vision on beauty. Who told us that that English Bulldog should have a nose like that, and teeth like that, and rings like that. But it's a heavy head, it's perfect, great, but not moving because of breeze problems. But our vision of beauty, exaggerated dogs keep winning titles. Pedigree exposed, Simon was also, where is he? Ah, oh there. 
German Shepherd, you all know, all over the world, one of the first examples of what we, or how we are responsible. Uh, dogs, exaggerated dogs, are used, still used for breeding. They keep being used in commercials. They are being liked, and this is really a problem, I think, millions of times on Facebook. I want you to see for yourself, don't give an answer, how many times do you like a dog on Facebook you really don't like? I once did. And then the dog got, came into my ring and I gave it a good. That was a problem. <laughs> People start complaining about the health of dog. This is also changing because they know the way how to handle. They know the way how to get the money. Welfare organizations start complaining and fighting and they find their way and they are much more clever to treat with politics than we are because we are dog people, passionate people and it's our world. But they know a lot because they were in pigs, they were in chicken, they were in cows, they were in, in canaries and whatever. So the government acted in 2015. They made a national law forbidding the breeding with dogs that have serious health and genetic problems. They did it in 2015, four years ago. That was a sign for the Dutch kinology to react, to act, sorry, to act. Maybe also to react, you know, because there was a law. Now we had to do something. These are champions, and I want you to see in the mirror, we made these dogs a champion. I don't think that they are healthy, that they can move properly, that they can breathe properly. And I'm not going to tell you what champions and who did it, and, and I don't mind. But we should be aware that there should uh, change something. We are a small player in the dog world. We have 10% French Bulldogs of the whole popularity in the Netherlands. 15% of pups. Vets do not have, and this is a real problem, vets do not have a regular station of purebred and non-purebred. So for vets and government and animal welfare, a purebred Labrador and a non-purebred is a Labrador. And that makes the problem. And Thomas, your result, it interests me very much because we have to share it worldwide because this can make maybe a solution for this. If we do not act, the government acts. And the government has no uh, um, reversing. Uh, the, they do it regardless pure or non-pure bred dogs. National law that forbids breeding with dogs that have serious health and genetic problems. So there's a national law that forbids. And that was the start sign for us to start as a formal dog world. We started the wide consolation with the partners that are involved with dogs. The government said, okay, you are allowed to do that and we will assist, but we maintain, we maintain, this is very important to remember it in two minutes, regulation were maintained. Then we gathered a lot of organizations, all the things, all the organizations I meant in that circle that were a lot. We quit denying. We said, okay, maybe you are right in some question, some uh, remarks. We acknowledge the problem. We stepped over our own shadow and that's a big big step. Step over your own shadow and see what happens in the world. We investigated health and we tried to measure. And 
it's a small country and that's also a problem because we have a worldwide dog world and we do it in one small country and Germany does it in one small country and Turkey does it in one small country but we need a coordination of all these tests and results then we can have perfect databases if we don't have databases who said that data, 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 then we cannot act. Because the first thing the politics ask is facts, figures, how to organize. We created awareness about our breeds and their origin, our passion and our challenges. We told the government, yes, we have problems, but some breeds have to have this because of their function. Some of the breeds are too much. We uh, be are aware of that. That's the first step. We only have one chance, ladies and gentlemen, and that is to take it or accept decisions of others. So one chance, no nothing more anymore because it lasts for 31 years now so government says stop so we made a team started and you see the Dutch Kennel Club represented breed clubs regional clubs breeders owners judges FCI and we started a, a big circle with animal welfare government the food suppliers the Dutch Kennel Club, education institutes, and the vets, and the universities. There was a joint agreement on a fair breeding program. It was accepted in May 2014, also by the government. And it was a program for three to four generations. Because a thing animal welfare does not know or acknowledge is that breeding is three, four generations looking ahead. You cannot change a breed in one mating. You, it's not possible. The breeding of healthy dogs with good behavior is leading. This is a very important. And be strict about exaggerations, severe and genetic diseases, Severe behavior and making appointments and keeping them. Very important. If you say, if you tell the government and the animal welfare, in 2018 we will have this and this and this, be sure that the 1st of January 2018, these people come and say, this is your, uh, your appointment, you kept it, please tell me. And if you don't show the things you achieved, it's <coughs> off. One chance, one chance, one possibility, you take it. In that fair breeding program, we had DNA for male and female and the puppies. And we discovered a lot also that some breeders were not always that nice. Uh, new breeding policy and progress step by step attention for non purebred dogs we also wanted to see what will the non purebreds do for instance in purebred dogs can we use uh, outcross and lookalikes outcross in with mixed uh, with uh, two breeds create awareness and understanding in society that's uh, a very big issue create the awareness that the FCI people are good people, are people that want to do the right thing for their passion, for their best friend, for their dog. Nobody, nobody intentionally breeds unhealthy dogs. Nobody in the FCI. I guarantee that. And I think Thomas too. Yes. <laughs> we started more tests. We had 100% compliance. You have to 
speak about that before. No breeding with high risk on health, behavior, and welfare. Breeding regarding fit for function. I told you the mastino should have some skin. Otherwise, it's not the dog fit for function. Pedigree will show health results of male and female. It's a sort of quality mark. It's not only the mark of the uh, inheritance, but it's also the mark of the uh, quality. Dog, male and female, used for breeding, have done some tests. Our goal is reach the average of 11 years. Why did we say that? It's a matter of compromises. Because politics, they don't understand that some dogs live a bit longer than other dogs. And if we say that the Irish Wolfhound, Sean, lives 10 years, then we think it's an old one. Mm, Try to convince the animal welfare. They say, my dog there, he, gets, he will, will be 15. And the Irish Wolfhound can have a perfect life in 10 years. Change breed standards, if possible, that use words that tend to exaggeration. We, Dutch Kennel Club, proposed to the French Kennel Club about the, the length of the muzzle of the French Bulldog. And in the English standard, it's very good uh, uh, phrased. It says, we're relatively short. And that's better, much better, than uh, it should be at one third. Then you can decide as a judge, okay, relatively short, a bit longer is better. We have uh, instructions for judges at shows. We try, we are still, we are still Working on this, control the best of breed dogs after the show, after the, uh, before the main ring of health, like in England. And when I talked with my Dutch colleagues, judges, it was a long talk. Do you not trust us? Do you think that I'm not capable to judge a bulldog? I said, yes. Sometimes. I see dogs in the main ring that I think are not capable. And if I see Simon, that German Shepherd in the main ring, then I think that judge who made that dog out of maybe 100, 200 German Shepherds best, not capable on that purpose, choosing also on health. Yeah, OK. Vets have to, to, to make a purebred and a non-purebred regulation. So we can, because the only dogs we can control are the purebred dogs. The dogs not uh, non-purebred are only to be controlled by the government. But in the meanwhile, the government said it takes too long. So they made uh, a team of so-called specialists. The Dutch Kennel Club was not invited to go because they said, you are not, you are responsible for a breed, uh, for some breeds, and you are not allowed to talk because you could be influencing us in the, in the wrong way. So. Uh, we had some new regulations. Uh, yes, we had some new regulations for short noses. I think two, three months ago, four months ago. They said, from the first of July, you are forbidden to judge, uh, to breed, with dogs that have a nose length of less than one third of the. Uh, length of the uh, skull. Because they said the length of the nose is the cause of many problems. We know that it's not true. We know that there are more problems. 
uh, causing breeze, breeze problems. We make rules, they said, to forbid breeding with short noses. And they only based this strange and crazy rule, regulation, on national problems, media, animal welfare, but not on international tests and results, scientific results. This is the traffic light system, they call it. If you have a dog with a nose that is less than 33% of the shape of the skull, I come back of the measurement, it's crazy, but then you are not allowed to breed with it, a red light. When you have a dog with a nose uh, up to 50, from 33 up to 50, it's orange. You can only breed with it when you breed with an orange dog or a green dog. And the green dog is 50 or more. So until 33, it's forbidden. 33 to 50, orange, and 50, green. OK. That should not be too bad. We thought, oh, yes. The government said, it's bad. I said, yes, but we measure. When we measure the skull and the muzzle, we do it like this, from occiput to stop, from stop to point of the nose. At least I do that. And I think a lot of judges do that. No, the government says, no, 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 no. You have to measure this and then go around until the occiput. And then he said, this means that Mastiff, Bull Mastiff, uh, even my breed in Newfoundland, Bordeaux dog, and do they have problems? No. I can imagine that he do something about the uh, pups or Tibetans or some Tibetan Spaniels or Shih Tzu maybe, but not all these dogs. And what about the nose? They said, yes, we take that one. They took for that, for the other one was national, and now they took international. And then they said, these noses are green, these noses are orange, and when you have a dog with this, forbid breeding. Only for one point. If nose like this, forbid. So we need to do, I wanted to say react again, because we again are late. Not too late, but we are late. And we have one, one small ex, ex, uh, excuse that we were not asked to sit in that group. We started an open discussion with specialists and we tried to get understanding. We started the discussion about national and worldwide breeding. Because we said, when, you don't, we, when you're not allowed to breed Shih Tzu in my country, then people go to Belgium or to Germany or to Switzerland. They take a Shih Tzu from there and go and have it here because we saw that people want to have a Shih Tzu or a French Bulldog with or without pedigree. But not to stop, because not to stop the breeding rules, because we told them it's not, this is not a good way. We will help you to find a way to change, to try to change, by working on longer noses, step by step, and working on measurements, working on tests. Is the nose, the short, the length of the nose is really the problem of breeding, uh, breeze problems, breeze problems. Create the understanding that we work for the same goal. This is really important that you have one goal all together, animal welfare, you, government, 
and try to work on one goal, one compromise. Create a program that, to improve the breeding. Together with the breed clubs and together with the breeders. And this will be a difficult job. We had the meeting uh, two months ago with our breeders and breed clubs about the short nose. It was emotional. It was emotional. There was a Tibetan Spaniel man, breeder and judge in heart and kidneys, we say. Yes, so it's... And he said, but the Tibetan Spaniel was originally like this. 5,000 years ago, we all had Tibetan Spaniels for this. But if it is 5,000 years ago, should we change or not? If people, society, thinks it's a problem, should we stick to everything we have or should we dare to change? So we are now working on a compromise. These rules are maintained, but we are now working on a compromise. And believe me, we are doing everything to delete all these re new regulations. And in the meanwhile, government said, OK, you are trying to do a good job. We will not control. They don't say we will not control, but we, they said we don't have the people to control. So they undergo some tests. So all these dogs with short noses, two short noses, they have to undergo some tests. Depending on the breed, there's some walking tests sometimes, ECFO, uh, eye test, nostrils, some other tests per breed. Def the, depending on the breed, we talk about that with the breed clubs. And we measure the results of breeding. We never did that so many. We have to do it. But, ladies and gentlemen, do we dare to change? Do we dare <coughs> to go from this into this? Do we dare to change from this into this? Do we dare to change? I don't say, I don't tell you that we don't have to change all the way, but maybe there's some middle way. A way that dogs feel healthy, people feel okay. So teamwork, ladies and gentlemen, makes dreams work. But only if we dare to change and if we want to change. Thank you.